Hey there, this is Neil Davis from Digital Cloud Training. In this series of short videos, I'm going to walk you through some practice exam questions from my AWS Certified Developer Associate Practice Exam course. And what I'm going to do is walk you through my thought process. So how do I go about working out which answer or answers are correct? And how do I work out which answers are definitely incorrect? And I've been doing IT examinations for over 20 years, so I've got quite a bit of experience and I want to try and use that to sort of teach you a few techniques so that when you go and sit your exam, you've got a much greater chance of success. So I hope you find it valuable. See you in the videos. The first question that comes up is an application will use AWS Lambda and an RDS database. And the developer needs to secure the database connection string and enable automatic rotation every 30 days. So we know there's a Lambda function there's a database, so the Lambda function is storing some information in the RDS database. And what we're tasked to do here is work out how can we secure the database connection string. And we know that there's an additional requirement that it must be rotated every 30 days. Now, straight away, I'm thinking that it's going to be Systems Manager Parameter Store or AWS Secrets Manager. Now, we're also asked what is the simplest way to achieve this requirement. So that indicates to me that there could be multiple answers here that are correct. And one of them is simpler than the other one. So before I look at these two, which I think it's probably going to be, I'm just going to make sure that I discount the other two. So let's have a look at those. Store the connection string as an encrypted environment variable in Lambda and create a separate function that rotates the connection string every 30 days. Okay, so straight away, you can tell that this is not simple. We've got these two services here, which are designed for storing this type of information. So we can do it ourselves, something like this with an encrypted environment variable, and then write our own functions, but that's clearly not going to be the easiest way. So then we have store the connection string in an encrypted S3 bucket and use a scheduled CloudWatch event to update the connection string every 30 days. Now, CloudWatch itself isn't going to do that, so you'd have to create some kind of Lambda function code in order to be able to do that anyway. CloudWatch events does not update connection strings for you. So again, this is probably not looking like a good solution. So we're back to these two options. Now, Systems Manager Parameter Store does not have its own automatic rotation. Now, we're not told in this case whether the application is going to do that. So is there something in the code that's going to enable automatic rotation or does the service itself need to support it? Well, if the service itself needs to support it, then it has to be Secrets Manager. And that's clearly going to be the easiest way. So I would go with this one. Store the secret in Secrets Manager and enable automatic rotation every 30 days. And it will do that for you. So let's click check. And sure enough, that is the correct answer. And we've got a bit of an explanation here, which is helping us to understand in a bit more detail. And this diagram kind of shows us a similar topology. So we've got Lambda, it's talking to RDS, but it needs some database credentials in order to log in. So it goes and talks to Secrets Manager to grab those credentials, and then it can authenticate to the database. And Secrets Manager is actually able to talk to RDS and update the secrets. Now, you would not be able to do that with Systems Manager Parameter Store. You would need to actually put it into your code. So you would need your application to update the credentials if they were stored in uh, Systems Manager Parameter Store instead of Secrets Manager. So let's move on and look at another question. So in this question, it says a developer is designing a web application that will be used by thousands of users. The users will sign up using an email address and the application will store the attributes for each user. Which service should the developer use to enable users to sign up for the web application? Now, sometimes when I read a question, I'm instantly going for an answer. And sometimes I'll actually just mark it like that. And I won't leave it there. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But I want to make sure that I'm correct. So I need to go and check out all of these other options and have a good think about it before I stick with that one. So we're looking at a web application here. And we know that Cognito is used by web and mobile applications. At least those are the dominant use cases. Users can sign up with an email address. And so a user pool is definitely a way you can do that because you can sign up with a user pool and store your credentials locally in that pool. And the application will then store the attributes for the user. 
So that sounds good to me. So let's look at the other options. The, the next one I'm going to look at is Cognito Sync. Now, Cognito Sync is about synchronizing profile data across mobile devices. Now, that's not what we're looking at here. We're looking at signing up. So it's not going to be Cognito Sync. That would be a different requirement. Amazon Inspector or AWS Inspector is a automated security assessment service. So it doesn't sound like we're doing anything like that here. And AWS App Sync looks quite out of place here. So I don't think it's that at all. And that's one which I don't know too much about, but I know it's not necessarily part of the AWS Certified Developer Associate exam. And it's about application development and creating APIs for combining data from different sources. So that's not really going to be the option that I choose here. I think it's a Cognito user pool. And Cognito can be quite a confusing service. I'm glad that it's just a user pool here and not an identity pool as an option, because that's when these questions can get a bit more tricky. So let's click on check. And sure enough, that's the correct answer. And if we look down, I've got a diagram in here as well with a bit more information. And you can see that with a user pool, you have the ability to authenticate and get tokens. And you can sign up with social sign-in, OIDC and SAML authentication providers. And you can also sign up locally as well. So it does user directory management and user profiles. And you can sign up and store your user credentials in the user pool itself. 